God is hard at work today and be ready to help him if he needs you. May the 16th, 230 days left in the year. If you're new here, subscribe to the YouTube channel, click a like, invite a friend, and join us for 10 minutes of devotional thoughts each day. Let's start off with the scripture, Luke 7, 23. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. If you want to read the Bible in a year, today you would read 2 Kings 24 to 25 and John chapter 5 verses 1 to 24. Here's some thoughts for today. Only as man brings his life into harmony with God, does that life have balance and meaning. Then man finds that he is not simply a mass of evolving dirt coming from nowhere and going nowhere. Kind of parallels our Ecclesiastes theme. He who angers you controls you. They only have power if you give them that power. For the man sound in body and serene in mind, there is no such thing as bad weather. As a meteorologist once told me, it's always sunny. We're just at the wrong altitude sometimes. Motivation for today. God does not make the other person as I would have made him. He did not give him to me as a brother for me to dominate and control, but in order that I might find a way for both of us to overcome. We're all overcomers. Amen to that. Today in history, in 1220, King Henry III of England lays the foundation stone for the new Lady Chapel at Westminster Abbey. 1770, the Dauphin of France, later King Louis XVI, he marries Marie Antoinette. 1920, French heroine Joan of Arc is canonized by the Roman Catholic Church. 1929 was the first Academy Awards ceremony in Hollywood. And Emil Jennings wins the first award for Best Actor and Janet Garner Best Actress. Name Oscar, that comes several years later. 1983, the London police begin wheel clamping illegally parked vehicles. Personal story for today. Wisdom is the good with an inheritance, and by it there is profit to them that see the sun. And that's Ecclesiastes 7.11. References today are in Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Now, yesterday, Ecclesiastes posed this question. What is good for a man in life? Today's verse is an implicit answer to that question. As today's verse indicates, wisdom is a good thing. And this passage is filled with pearls of wisdom that hope to form a string of meaningful truth. The struggle, though, is that it, this is inspired wisdom from God is intentionally limited to the parameters under the sun thought. That is, in essence, wisdom for the here and now without a thought given towards eternity or right now. But the wisdom it offers for us today is still powerful. The comparison of a good name to fine perfume is a piece of very relevant poetic imagery. A repudiation has a way of lingering as an odor, good or bad. It also makes the first of seven better than statements that offer wise guidance for our choices. Go back and read chapter seven if you want to know what I'm talking about. So the mood of the passage shifts immediately as mourning is counted better than laughter. Uh, but before we dismiss that notion as a the depression of someone detached from God, consider that James reinforces the same sentiment in his epistle in James 4, 9. A sober attitude is the fruit of a humble heart. Rebukes are generally not our favorite thing to hear, but a wise correction is better than foolish reinforcement. <laughs> Isn't that the case? That's a difficult truth to accept sometimes, particularly in today's day and age. But again, humility is important. Uh, verse 7 refers back to the issue of money and acceptance. A love for either can be used against even a wise man through bribes and extortion. Verse 8 gives us an insightful contrast between proudly beginning a project and patiently enduring until the end. Part of that patience is having the humility to be slow to anger. Notice what a key factor humility is in wise living. Verse 10, now that's intriguing. How many times have you heard someone refer back to the good old days? Even at the time of this writing, that was a mistaken judgment. 
Then comes a profound statement about the difference between money and wisdom. Smart decisions can prolong your life. The passage ends with an important note about the good and bad times. God hands creates them both. So on this earth, we aren't assured of an easy life. Nobody promised milk and cookies, but in the end, our team wins. There is a strong connection between Ecclesiastes and the book of James. Both of them focus especially on the here and now in, in different ways. Well, Ecclesiastes looked to answer the world's questions without looking into heaven. James commanded us to put our heaven-bound faith into practice on earth, and the two marry very well. Here's some devotional thoughts for today. Let's get into a little Greek mythology for a second to bring out a point. So according to Greek mythology, King Argus owned a stable of 3,000 oxen, which uh, the stalls had not been cleaned for 30 years, hence the English word agian. Uh, I don't even know that word, but apparently it's a word in the English language, which refers to something exceedingly filthy from long neglect. Now, Hercules, the mythical strong man, was commanded to clean the Augean stable in a single day. When Hercules first saw the stable, he was dismayed at, by its size, its filthiness, and stench. Then he noticed that it was located between two great rivers, the Alpheus and the Peneus. And uh, he put his great strength to work and diverted the rivers so that they flowed through the building. Within a short time, the stable was rinsed clean. The story is a myth, of course, but myths by their very nature, preserve the yearnings of the culture that embrace and perpetuate them. The story reflects our longing for someone to wash out our lives accumulated with waste and filth of years. Now, there's a powerful river of forgiveness that flows from the cross of Christ, and that desert is still waiting to be blooming uh, like a rose when the rivers of life flow out from them. So there's no defilement that can withstand its cleansing flow. When we humbly confess our sins, yes, repentance, humility, as we said before, and we get baptized in water, and we receive the Holy Spirit with the sign, the evidence of that, speaking in a new language that we'd never learned before, all of our unrighteousness is washed away, 1 John 1, 9. We can be sure that our sins, which are many, are forgiven, Luke 7, 47. We are clean and have access to the river when needed. And raining at last, this is a story for you. He shall come down like rain upon the mound grasses or showers that water the earth. In his days shall the righteous flourish and abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. That's Psalm 72, verses 6 and 7. And what a beautiful sound it is to wake up to the slow, consistent rain. Uh, I guess if you're in Seattle, maybe you get a bit much of that. But it's like music to the ears. And it's a peaceful soul and that one could sleep all day. That's what it's been like, uh, you know, going on in, uh, in certain parts of the world, particularly if you've gone through a drought period, maybe from California, maybe in Queensland, Australia, and suddenly the rain bursts forth. And wow, how cleansing and how wonderful that sound is. So it doesn't matter if it's dark outside when it's normally light or, you, you know, or that the day will be wet. The rain makes you want to be lazy sometimes uh, and just lay around. The rain comes from heaven. God knows his people need rain to water their gardens. You know, I always look forward to that day. Oh, it's raining. Don't need to get out and water the garden. Uh, let God do that for me. And, you know, of course, it's going to rinse the dams and the rivers. Uh, you know, a, a hideous thing that, that as you drive down the I-5, you go past the Mount Shasta Dam. And I can remember just like the low level of water there. It's pretty uh, heart-wrenching to see that. And so you need to replenish that water supply and rain is needed in parts of the country where fires are rampant. As I said, California, uh, Queensland, Australia, other places around the world, uh, even here in BC, we've had our horrendous fires, Fort McMurray, Alberta, all over the place. So likewise, there'll be a continued spiritual droughts in the world as there is right now. But God wants his kingdom to support itself through the indwelling power of God's spirit. He will send the rain in our hearts and keep it fresh and strong. That's why we say in John 7, 37, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water and the desert will bloom like a storm. There's an image for you. 
That's why praying in the spirit is, is so refreshing. And uh, if you haven't done that lately, take five or 10 minutes, just pray in the spirit. 20 is better, but you know, start small and build up your strength. So God wants his people to grow in love and to prosper and to serve him with all our hearts. Those that God waters can produce fruit. In fact, that's the only way you can produce fruit is with water. Signs, miracles, and wonders are forthcoming in the dry and weary land. Amen to that. Well, that's all I got. Got a couple of fun facts for today. Again, subscribe to the channel. Share this with a friend. In the course of a lifetime, you, while you're sleeping, you know, ready for this? You'll eat 70 assorted insects and possibly 10 spiders. Now, a duck's quack doesn't echo anywhere. I've never really thought about that, but no one knows why. Closing thought. Lord, help me maintain my wonder of great and noble things. Amen. Got a joke. A city slicker moves to the country and decides he's going to take up farming. He heads to the local co-op and tells the man, give me 100 baby chickens. Co-op man complies. A week later, the man returns and says, give me 200 baby chickens. Co-op man complies. Again, a week after the man returns, this time he says, give me 500 baby chickens. Wow, the co-op man replies, you must be doing really well. Nope. I haven't got a clue. I'm either planting them too deep or too far apart. Well, the blonde goes in to cash a check at the bank, and the bank teller wants to identify herself before it cash a check. Well, she rummages through her handbag, pulls out a mirror, and looks and goes, yep, that's me right there. That's all I got. Thanks for coming. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.